Hey, this is Gail Nelson, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters Miami, the host of The Game of Life, where everybody makes the team, but how you play is up to you. Welcome to the game of life where everybody makes the team, but how you play is up to you. I'm Gail Nelson, president and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters Miami uh, with the bearded edition of <laughs> the game of life. Uh, here with a partner, good friend, uh, Dr. Brian Dorn. Brian, welcome to the game of life. How you doing? And I'm playing the game. You know, they say you're either on the sidelines or on the court, and it's a choice. And you, know, you may not be first round draft pick. But, you know, you can get on the intramural squad. You can just pay pickup, but you got to get on the court and play because you either watch or you play. And I'm choosing to play. So I didn't even know, I didn't even know the name of the podcast, but it's apropos to how I'm choosing my life. Oh, you no stuff. doubt about it. And so that's why you're uh, – and we really appreciate you being a guest on The Game of Life. And obviously, uh, mentoring is what I do every single day, not only professionally, but with the kids. Uh, over 3,000 youth, you know, in Miami. And let's first talk about – uh, and again, I can't help but address the colon in the room uh, that I see on your right shoulder. So yeah, yeah. I, got a, I, got a, I got a colon in my room. So yeah, it's, uh, no doubt, no doubt. I so. can show you the I can show you the other wall, but this is no, so you know, no secrets. I'm a doctor. I'm a gastroenterologist. I do GI. So we GI is we do the liver, we do the stomach, and the colon, and the intestines, and we deal with things like heartburn and irritable bowel syndrome and stomach pain and gallstones and hepatitis and nausea and vomiting and all the GI symptoms when people don't go to the bathroom a lot or they go too much, colitis and all those, all those issues. We do a colon cancer screening, very common, uh, cancer preventable. So that's what I do. I trained at University of Miami. I did my GI and liver disease training there. Um, stayed in Miami ever since, been in practice for about 15 years since that time in South Broward. I live in Miami Beach area and Surfside and, you know, uh, very committed to my local community. You and I connected through the nonprofit world, then professionally, and now we're partnering up even more. And now we're here today on the podcast. Well, no, I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you do personally. And I'll, you. You know, again, as, as a black man uh, who I see so many, especially we're going to talk about COVID-19, but so many underlying uh, symptoms and underlying conditions, uh, and a lot of things are preventable. Our diet, how we, you know what we eat, and exercise, and you do a great job on LinkedIn, Brian, in terms of Thanks. always promoting you know uh, healthy eating and healthy activity. Uh, and so I can personally vouch for the incredible work you do uh, you. because I can go there uh, in terms of just really keeping me healthy, you know, as well. So uh, kudos to what you're doing in the medical realm. Let's talk about prevention for a minute, uh, sure. because again, everybody uh, is concerned about their health right now. Uh, we're dealing with COVID-19. So uh, how are you doing, first of all, personally? I mean, you're a doctor, but again, this virus does not discriminate. No, no, it doesn't. No, no race, no color, no gender. You may say the kids are all safe and no age. You know, people are getting the virus. People are affected differently, obviously. Someone who's older or someone who is sick or has diabetes or you know, elderly or prone to asthma or, or pneumonia, someone who's on chemotherapy or drugs that keep their immune system down much more at risk than say someone like yourself or myself, maybe, you know, middle-aged and healthy or someone who's younger and healthy. So many, many people have the virus or have gotten the virus, will get the virus, had it, didn't even know they have it, had mild symptoms, a little runny nose, a little ache, that's it, it passes. You know, I'm 49. I mean, I've lived through many viruses in my life. Didn't even know I had them. Didn't name them. They weren't called COVID this or influenza or viruses. The problem with this virus is one, it's very contagious. And two, it's spreading quickly and it's catching people. And the issue becomes the healthcare systems, the hospitals get overwhelmed quickly. And when you're in a hospital and say you have 20 machines that help people breathe, and then suddenly you got 50 people in the hospital in the emergency room that need that machine to breathe, as you saw in Europe and countries like Italy and Spain, then it becomes uncomfortable decisions about who goes on a breathing machine and who doesn't, who lives, who dies. So I think that a lot of the, the 
reaction in the country here, the shutdown, stay home, the testing, has been about not getting the surge, the overwhelming wave of people to the rush to hospitals, which would just crush our system. Um, right decision, wrong decision, you know, it's not going to be the one to tell or decide on that, politics aside, economy aside. The truth of it is, you don't want to be like in Katrina. We lived through Hurricane Katrina. We saw what being unprepared did. We saw chaos. We saw people in a Superdome. We saw horrible stories of human suffering because of lack of preparedness and lack of prevention. So we prepared that way. In terms of my own personal prevention, what am I doing to prevent and do the things I'm doing all the time? More than ever now, making sure I'm rested, making sure I sleep enough, making sure I'm eating well, eating healthy, eating greens and healthy foods and not processed food and staying away from the sugars and away from flowers. I'm exercising, making sure I get it in. I got 20 minutes in this morning outside, you know, body weight exercises. Two nights ago, 20 pound dumbbells outside on the driveway, knocked out 500 reps, whatever. I'm gonna go running tomorrow morning, do a body weight workout, bring my jump rope, run back, probably do some wall jumps, do some push-ups, run more. Yeah, you know, I got a plan, I've been doing that every Saturday with one of my buddies and, you know, gotta keep moving. Hydrating, four liters of water a day go in. I mean, I get plenty of water in. I do it with protein shakes sometimes, I do straight up liters. Hydrating, staying hydrated, keeping my headspace down, not letting the worry, the anxiety consume me. Look, I, there's things you can control, things I can control, and there's things you can't. What can I control? What I eat, how much I sleep, how much I drink, how, what time I turn off the Netflix and <laughs> let myself sleep, and that, get that, how much time I'm on this phone and this crazy social media. Where I choose where I get my news sources from, if I even want to get in the news, I choose not to look at the news sometimes because I don't find it helpful to me. I don't have control over my business getting the SBA loan and the PPP loan and the money to get our employees back. But I have the choice to get my application in and have it there and call them every day. So there's things we control, things we can't control. So I'm focusing on what I can control. I'm focused on when I feel the worry and anxiety of the uncertainty in terms of my health and what could happen to me, my family, my loved ones, to my business, to my own life. And then bring myself back to the present moment. What's your present moment? moment? I'm sorry. Yeah, right. my, yeah, the present moment's mindfulness. Exactly. And so mindfulness. Let's, stay on let's stay on that. Because this is, this, with... this is the moment right here. The yes. only thing this moment is this right now, this moment and that moment's already in the past. I'm already on the next moment. So what's a good trick for mindfulness? Simplest thing, we all do it. You're not even aware you're doing it, it's probably breathing. Yes. Focus on the breath. So when your mind starts spinning, you're like, I'm out of work, my, my mom's out of work, I'm unemployed, I got no food stamps coming in, I can't get my $1,200, no one's picking up the unemployment line, you know, I can't get a hold of anyone, my grandma's sick, she's afraid to go out, she can't get her medicine, she owes, you know, they're calling me for the bills, you know what, gotta go present, take a breathe in. That's the only thing real at that moment. All the other stuff is just an emotional storm in your head. They're real, it's feelings, but they're not facts, it's feelings. Some things are factual, but what we're interpreting and what we're doing with those feelings is what controls our state, right? Our mind is talk about, Brian, uh, as it relates to the mind being right, keeping your body right, uh, and I got to ask you this question on this mentoring podcast. Who mentored you? Because you have a, your mindset, your philanthropy, uh, your social responsibility that we're going to talk about, uh, what yeah. you do every day, which is prevention. You're saving lives every day. Uh, but the, you're also sharing a, a thought process uh, that really resonates well with big brothers and sisters because the whole concept is I'm not giving it to you. I want to teach you so that you can grow and help Correct. someone else. So let's take it back. Who mentored you and, and what they teach you? I think the truth of it is, you know, you can believe in reincarnation or whatever you want, but you know, there's some things you're born with, karma. There's some things that are intrinsic. 
some things that are part of you and some things that are learned. But the truth of it is, no matter what baseline you're in, no matter how you're born, no matter what your karma is, no matter what your personality is, no matter how driven you are or not, or how focused you are, you still have choices along the way and choices to reset your course and life to action. I don't think that even though I knew I wanted to go to medical school, even though I was in college and I was promoting concerts and doing the parties and I was social and I was doing, I was a political science major. I wasn't like doing all the science and math. I was like, you know, doing everything. But I knew I, what I wanted. I had my, I had my, my vision, my ultimate purpose in life. And I'm sharing with you words that I pull from Tony Robbins because I pull a lot from Tony Robbins now. Now, in the last two years, five years ago, I didn't even know about the I knew the guy, but I didn't look at this stuff. So I find things, different things to pull from. I grew up in a house that was maybe ahead of its time in terms of teaching, in terms of yoga, meditation, and different things. It was, you know, two Jewish parents from Brooklyn, but we're not really practicing that. They were more into spirituality and yoga and different things. You know, and I've done different courses, I'm doing the work. It ain't come, it don't come cheap, it don't come free, it doesn't come easy. I'm doing the work. I was up at five o'clock this morning, meditating, doing stuff for our partnership to help the littles get resumes, working on a new business I'm gonna start, planning out my day, coaching people. I do outside of medicine on lifestyle and health and nutrition and balance, you know, writing down and journaling starting my day with a power question. What am I excited about today? Every day, we'll start at the first thing you wake up, boom, what am I excited about today? Write it down, type it into my computer, Re rewiring the brain. So now I don't care what age you are. If you're listening to this podcast and you're 12, 16, you're a little, you're big, you're somewhere in between and you don't know what I am. Am I a little, am I a big? Don't make a difference. If you're 49 or you're 62, you need to have those resets. We all have them. Yes. And if you're not making resets, you're not making progress. If you're not making progress, you're not making momentum. If you're not making momentum, you might as well be dead. Did because you play any sports, Brian? Did you play any sports? Not competitively. I do. You know, I, I, I like sports. I never was a great athlete, but I always enjoy sports. Like, you know, I used to play back hockey and tennis and, and I mean, football never. You know, I mean, whatever, flag football. Uh, baseball, I played as a kid, soccer. And I did all the sports. But I never was like the Excel athlete. I found my my spot, my niche, my group in other ways. Got you. The reason and, I asked that question, let me tell you why I asked that question. Yeah. Because what you are talking about, uh, for those who, I mean, may Kobe Bryant rest in peace, that's a Mamba mentality. You're talking, a lot of NBA players I talk to and that I know, they call it a, a, kind of that heaven at doll. It's a relentless pursuit. For perfection it applies to business it applies certainly uh, to sports uh, and so there are athletes who don't have the mentality uh, and they accept right. mediocrity uh, then there's there's business people that accept mediocrity but so what you are saying to all of us today on the game of life podcast here with dr brian dork oh incredible person uh, who's saving lives every day uh, dealing helping us deal with COVID 19 with the mentality that transcends uh, one aspect of life, which could be sports, but it really permeates and uh, relates to everything that we do. So I just had to ask that question because if you just had a little crossover and you have the height, you'd be a pretty good basketball player, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can do it. I never hit the three well, but I tried to, you know, I was a little bit better on the defense. But uh, yeah, was, you know, I mean, I mean, sports, listen, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm very active athletically. You know, I'm, I'm training, I'm running, I do jujitsu, um, you know. I'm out kite, kiteboarding now, learning how to kiteboard. You know, I've, I've skied in my life. I've tried golf. You know, I play tennis. I do. I'm very active. Um, yes. I wasn't a three varsity weather sport guy in high school, but I found other ways in my youth and growing up to be engaged and find my niche and my spot. When I look back and I think about what I was doing in high school, it wasn't some master plan, but it's part of like that intrinsic blueprint of who I was. I was doing projects, raising money for 4-H or CNI dogs. We actually petitioned and got a severely physically deformed youth from Vietnam. He was they're called Amerasian. So in the Vietnam War in the 70s, a lot of American soldiers 
ended up having babies with Vietnamese women. Right. And when the Americans left the war, left Vietnam, a lot of those children were left there and they're called Amerasians and they were not treated very well. So somehow we got hold of this, you know, story of this kid, Lee Van Min, severely deformed. They had to walk on all fours, couldn't stand up. And we ended up getting him petitioning, getting a congressman involved, getting him to America. You know, in high school, we did a standing in the malls on the weekends, getting 30,000 signatures, getting the congressman involved from, the US, from Washington, D.C., who actually went to Vietnam, brought the kid back to America and ended up adopting him getting his back surgery and able to stand up eventually in his life. So it's, it's an interesting story. I mean, um, but it, the point is that stuff was there. The blueprint was there and I've only carried it forward in life on top of that, you know, going to school, starting a family, starting a business, starting a nonprofit. So that stuff keeps going there. So I'm telling you, even if you're not like that and you haven't done those things in high school, game on. That's now right. start, start now, start today. You know, we talk about perfection. The one thing I'll say, the, the lesson on that is, you know, don't let perfection get in the way of greatness or excellence. There you go. And I've, in my own life, have learned, or I'm still learning, not to let perfection get in the way of excellence. Because there's many, many attributes to what we do. And don't always have to be perfect to be hitting the bar. So, you know, I do get, you know, I, and I work with Tony Robbins group. I get coaching myself. You know, I don't do this on my own. I don't wake up and figure it out. I put the work in. I get coaching. And I got coached yesterday. And, you know, shoot, she told me, my coach told me, shoot for the moon. But if you miss, you'll land in the stars. No doubt about it. And the first time I heard that quote, I'm like, that's solid. Yeah, I've heard you that know? many times, and it's very relevant. Let's talk about game on. You mentioned game on, and it is absolutely game on. Uh, and to all the bigs and littles uh, that are out there, and even our alumni, we want to let everybody know uh, that we have a partnership. Uh, and you started a nonprofit, you know, Get Hired Miami. I want you to talk about that in a minute. But Get Hired Miami is partnering with Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Miami. And our goal is to ensure that our littles uh, that are in high school and even some of our alumni are equipped with what a ticket, a resume, the ticket to a job, making sure they can constantly update in the cloud uh, their resume. And so it is game on starting in May. So talk to us about Get Hired Miami uh, as we get ready to embark on this game on project. All right, yeah. so Get Hired Miami. So what's the story with Get Hired Miami? So about two, three years ago, and more probably five years ago, actually, I was gonna start doing volunteer work as a doctor on the weekends through the public health trust through Jackson or Jackson Memorial where I trained. Why? Because I wanted my kids to see that there's more than just making my own business, making my own wealth, building my own financial portfolio. Believe me, it's not coming so easy. I'm working hard for it, but I wanted my kids to see there's more than just building my own personal gain, my own nest. Um, so I was going to do it. And then because of concerns with malpractice, in my own practice, my partner said, you know, we were exposing ourselves. I said, you know what, you're right. Someone said, so soon may even know I'd be protected. So I said, you know, I respected my partner in a business relationship. You got to respect your partner. If you're in a marriage at home, you got to respect your partner. If you're on a team, you got to respect your teammates. Right. So I said, you know, you're right. I respect your concern. And I'll give another way. And I was thinking, what could I do? What am I good at? And I'm really good at, you know, computers and technology. And I love doing it. I said, what can they help a soldier coming back from Iraq? And what I could do in five minutes for him on Microsoft Word or Google, he or she may not be able to do in five months or five years. But I could do it quickly, faster, easier, better. And I'm going to create a tool. So over the weekend, sitting there in my house, I remember specifically, I found a Get Hired Miami, put a website up. Got the name, got the nonprofit, boom, boom, boom. Created a free tool, and we have a free resume builder tool. We partnered with someone. I created, I moved to Google, became a Google for nonprofit. And so the, the premise is we have a 100% free tool, no strings attached, no charges at the end, no credit cards. Go through the form. We create a free resume for you. We send it back to you with comments, edited, it's all cleaned up. You can send it back to us, but it lives in the cloud. 
You don't need to start with jump drives and Microsoft Word. And, oh, I got to get a new job. I'm going to start a resume now. Once you build it, it's there. It lives in the Google Cloud. Every six months, every year, go back and update it. You're a student. Okay. You may not be getting a job. You know what? Internships, scholarships, all that stuff builds on it. Because when you start applying to college, you start applying to vocational school, you start applying for your first job after high school, no one's going to talk to you unless you have a resume. Yes, you need a LinkedIn profile if you're going to corporate America. Yes, you're going to want LinkedIn if you're in college and thinking about business and graduate school because that's how people communicate now. But you're still not going to get a job unless you hand someone a piece of paper, a resume, or email them a PDF of a resume. And if it's typo-filled and looks sloppy and doesn't have good font and doesn't appeal to the eyes, no one's looking at you. No one's going to meet you. No one's going to shake your hand. Because no one's looking at your resume for more than five to seven seconds anyway. No one cares really what the content is or getting a sense. Who is this person in five seconds? Maybe seven seconds. Maybe nine, but not much more. No more than that, but that's you on paper. That's you that's on paper. paper. But no, I, <clears throat> as a business owner, we see these resumes. And I know I see sloppy, I see typos, I see streets spelled with lowercase s, I see phone numbers. 786, no period, no space, no parentheses. I'm like, that person's not detail-oriented. Now forget it. But I see a clean resume, so they take their life seriously. They're taking accountability for how they're presenting themselves. That person's going to come clean dressed to the office. That person's going to present, represent my business well. And they care about themselves. And so we'll meet them. That's the shame is is that someone has a typos on their resume, they can be the best hire you or I have ever had in 10 years. You'll never meet them. You'll never have a chance to shake their hand. You told me you were giving your little elevator pitches. They They'll be never, they're never going to be able to give you that elevator pitch if you don't No good resume, no elevator pitch. I mean, you don't get nope. the opportunity. <clears throat> you, don't get, you don't get in the door. You got to get, get on the court to play the game. No doubt. The resume, the resume is the way to get on the court. Um, so this tool we created is 100% free. We offer it to organizations in Miami. Um, it's really something I reached out to you and big brothers and big sisters. You see the value in it. And we've, yes. have, a, we have a much bigger vision, you and I together, in what to do with it and how to offer the tools and services that we have, which is more than just resumes, yes. to really get the littles job ready, scholarship ready, internship ready, college ready, life ready. That's and, it. Okay, that's it, man. It's, it's about being life ready. So the tool's there, and we're really going to streamline this, and we have a dedicated page for the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. We're going to bring some type of educational initiatives, other things in work with you. But the core of what we're doing is every little, think about it, my 10th grade, sorry, my 11th grade, 12th grade, should have a resume. No because when you're done... Every six months, every year, you're going to have more job experience, work experience, internship experience, awards, grades. Um, you know, maybe your GPA solid. Maybe you took a cal an AP course. Maybe you got, you know, the truth of it is optics. The yeah. world is optics. The world is how you spin it. Social media. If you can't figure that out from social media, then you're missing what you're doing all day scrolling your phone because it's all about optics. What catches your eye? What catches your eye? Well, speaking so, of that, Brian, let's just pause yeah. for just a minute. So you mean to tell me with all these kids focused on things like TikTok yeah. and how many people are following them, uh, the attention to detail they need to focus on is not followers. It's making sure you invest in how you look because right. this artificial microwave society, as I call it, where relationships are just like that, to have a longstanding relationship when we met, you picked up on how I rolled very quickly. I right. picked up on how you rolled very quickly. It took seconds. It took seconds. Right. And right. now so that's individual. Individual went to then the businesses and organizations that we represent and run. And now it leads to partnership. And such is life, isn't it? When you don't, re right. if you represent yourself in a, a, let's say, a mediocre way, nobody wants to be around. You're not challenging yourself or anyone else to be better. Talk to us. Correct. I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you two things on that. So one thing I wanted to close in, when we talk about optics, it's all about how you spin it. So actually, I have links on our website for all these tools. So we partner with Sailor Academy, partner with Google, 
where you can go do an online course, get a certificate, print it, download it on things like digital marketing, digital communication. I don't care what it is, but you get like, boom, you have something for your resume. Certification in digital marketing by Google. People are gonna be like, oh man, this guy's in California. This, this girl, she's, she's on her game. She's got she's certification from Google. It's a freaking online course for free from like Google Garage, whatever it is. We have all those links, but it's not about the links. They're there for everyone. Yes. You, gotta, it's like, you can know the whole book. But if you don't know what page to open to, it'll make a difference. So this in terms of optics, it's like, how do you play the game? You and I are gonna work with the littles to kind of use the free tools that we have, use the free tools that are out there and help get everyone life ready. I wanna to go to one other thing we talk about optics and stuff and it's about status and this, the optics of status. And I had a story yesterday, a guy, a guy came in, walked in the room, happens to be an African-American guy, late twenties, athletic, strong, wearing a UNC football shirt, had his mask on because of COVID-19, had his backpack. So I couldn't really just see his face, but I already, had it, I already walked in and within three seconds, identified his status in my mind. He didn't even speak to me, but we have our story of everyone we meet. Yes. We have the optics. I said, okay, this guy's an athlete. He's kind of clean cut. And going forward, I said, you know, you played sports in college and you know, we started talking. What do you do? Um, I'm a principal. Boom, his status started elevating for me. So he told me he's a principal. I said, okay, so his status went up. And as we talked more, where your principal? I started hearing how he was speaking. I knew where he was a principal because I knew his name because he was also someone I reached out to in the nonprofit world. And we made that connection like, oh, small world. But immediately, I said, but the way he started, because I remember when I reached out to him, he jumped on it. He's like, man, this tool is great. I'm going right to the superintendent with it. And he carried it as far as he could until he got lost in the political world of people who didn't see vision. Right. right. But he was motivated. He was professional when I spoke on the phone. And again, his status went up. And when we talked more and we understood more of who he was, his status changed. But it's the story of it is, is you're always entering the, the conversation in a low status position, especially when you're in going for a job interview a college interview, a scholarship interview, an internship interview. You're walking in a low status position. I pull a lot of this stuff from Oren Clough. He writes a book called Pitch Anything. Solid, solid material. Talk about elevator pitches. Listen to this guy on podcast, pull his book. He has an email newsletter. He's out in California, but really good stuff. But it's all about, you know, he uses the word flip the script, change the story, change how people perceive you. So you're dealing with these littles, you have a bunch of littles who are coming in on a low status position, looking for opportunity in life. You gotta change the status, you gotta change the perception, you gotta come with different tools, you gotta change yeah. how you speak, you gotta change how you shift the story. That's, this is stuff that you and I are gonna keep working forward on and you and I understand. But that's what I wanna talk about, the optics. You're scrolling through Instagram, you're quickly, identifying, oh, that's cool, that's not. Like this, don't like this. You're making quick, second decisions on someone or something Yes. based on visual stimuli, based on preconceived notions, and it all goes back to the basic, like, you know, inner brain, and I'll give you some other names of stuff, like it's great listening to. Simon Sinek, you know, a great talk, on his TED talk on the why, why we do things. So when you go for that job interview, when you're going for that internship interview, you know, and like, why do you want this? It's like, well, I want it because I'm a good student and I study hard and my mom and dad will love me more if I get the $500 scholarship. And I really want to go to UF because I like the football team. You come with a story of the why. Right. You know, why do you want to do it? Because I am empowered to change the life of my community by studying at the School of Economics and Communication that only your school has, and this professor's there, and I have a legacy of my aunt who went there, who came back and made this decision and changed her community, and I have created this vision and model that empowers me to go forward, and I know that I'm 
a perfect fit for this college and this program. And I will do nothing but carry the message forward and represent it with passion. You just looked at the script. You just looked at the script. And so messaging matters. And Brian, let me just say this to you. Yeah. Uh, your, your give back, the time you have spent, uh, the countless hours you have spent assembling a team with Get Hard Miami uh, that is focused. And I appreciate on behalf of the entire Big Brothers Big Sisters family. And the reason I invited you on this podcast is to have this real and raw conversation because you always bring it that way uh, for those that may not know you. But the bottom line is as we deal with COVID-19, as we continue, because we're still making matches, uh, we're still vetting volunteers, and we had to flip the script in business. What we did, we had to pivot. Uh, and so people right. are thinking, oh, poor nonprofit. No, uh, we, these kids still need our help. So if we uh, put our, you know, stick our head in the sand, if you will, and hide and just want people to feel sorry for us, that's not how we roll. And so the messaging, our pursuit for perfection, we won't Correct. let that pursuit get in the way of our greatness and the excellence of our kids. So what we're doing right now, in partnership with Get Hired Miami, and we're excited about it, let, we'll let the world know that starting in May, we're holding, we've got some baselines that we'll be sharing, holding our Lodos, finding out how many of them don't have a resume, and we will equip over starting in May, going into June, and maybe in, by the end of the summer, by the end of the summer, we don't know what's going to be going on with COVID-19, but by the end of the summer, uh, Brian, one of the things that's important is we want to have our littles with a resume and prepare. There's some mentorship, Correct. scholarship, internship, citizenship. That's, that's the message. That's the continuum. And this is, and this is a, you know, a great way, you know, as we probably go towards closing this conversation. Yes. Is this is the time now. That's right. If you watch, yeah, I'm not a big Game of Thrones fan, but people love that show. And they talk about this concept of winter's coming. What's winter's coming? Oren Klaff, in, when he talked, that was at his conference, referred to winter's coming as like, this is the problem. The stakes are high. Well, mm. no, winter's here. Winter's this here. Is like, this is here. I mean, this is a problem's here. It's now. And people are out of work. No retails, no stores, no restaurants. This is the time to prepare. You need to adapt. Don't sit on your hands. Don't sit victimization. For me, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You need to be on your game. You need to be ready. When that dome lifts, and that dome will lift, hiring will come, money will come in, stimulus will come, companies will come back, companies will go bankrupt, they'll be refinanced, they'll come back, they'll hire. Are you going to be ready? If you're not ready with your resume now to go out on a moment's notice to start getting a job, then you know, you got to rethink what your priorities are right now. It's not watching Netflix. It's not sitting home watching the news. It's not walking endlessly and having nice, long, relaxing breaks with your spouse, which is good, but right. it's about get ready now. The dome's going to lift. Life's going to go back. Different. The life will go back. You got to adapt and you got to be ready to play the game of life, as you and I say, right? So. Well, I tell you what, so you, I tell you what, what's, it, what's interesting, you just did my clothes. I, uh, <laughs> because no, at the end of the day. Symmetry. And symmetry, no, I really man. Symmetry. <laughs> symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. And so, Dr. Brian Dorg, thank you for being with us on The Game of Life, where everybody makes the team, but how you play is up to you. You talked about choices. You talked about keeping our bodies, our minds right. We talked about the messaging. Messaging matters. What we say, how we carry ourselves. People are listening, and they make that conclusion. They draw that conclusion very quickly based on what we put out on, on paper <laughs> and you know, verbally as well, and in our mannerisms. Uh, and so I want to just thank you again for the presentation as well as the partnership with Get Hired Miami. More great things to come. How about when we come back uh, for a follow-up podcast, we'll have some littles who will talk about the time when they did not have a resume, what they're doing now, a true before and after. That's uh, all with that, 100%. Measure, it's all about measurable benchmarks in life. And that's why I said to you, Dale, we're going to go forward. I said, I want to know how many littles you have now. I want to know how many littles have resumes or how many have resumes and want to improve it. So we can measure at the end. And we're going to be measuring at one month and at night, three months. Because if you're not setting goals in your life, based on outcomes and results, if you're not measuring where you are, then you'll never know if you're making progress. So that's even a, that's even a solid, that's a solid close right there.
So that's I'm off the, that's it. You're closing and reclosing. So on that note, we from the I'm beginning on. of this podcast to the end, we've made some measurable progress. Dr. Brian Noor, thank you for being on the game of life. Right. Everybody makes the team. How you play? Stay smart. Stay, yeah, stay smart. Stay healthy now more than ever. Honestly, take care of yourself. Take care of your community. We'll get through this. Not alone, man. All right. See you later. Thank you. You got it. Bye bye.